is I want to get a really steep angle. So I kind of line up the, the guy really steep. <laughs> and then I just create a line like so, 10 centimeters long, right? And then I extend the beam to make contact with the, like that, right? Then I finish the rectangle. Important when you're making the rectangle is put the 90 on the line to make the edges. Some people don't do this, and then they wind up with not rectangular corners, which is then not a rectangle. Hey, isn't this supposed to be three? Yeah, one, two, three in that direction. I switch it over to the other side, put the 90 back on the line again. Another thing like this, and the 90 like that, and then I go. Thank you. And then one, two, three, over there. All right, so three by three by 10. Take my protractor one more time. Take from this edge, down like this, and this edge, down like this. And it's critical if you're gonna do this right to have a really smooth rectangle. If the rectangle does not have these right angles in the corners, the whole thing is gonna look wrong and it's gonna not be straight. All right, so. How do we do that? I construct a normal line. Again, put the 90 on the surface, um, like here. Where the contact point is. Sorry if my head's in the way. I gotta make sure it's pointed right. And then I Bless have a little dash line at the point of contact, like so. And then uh, I gotta measure the instant angle. Well, I should have just left the protractor there. So I put the crosshairs there. I should extend this out also. It helps to extend the beam out so that you, you know where you're pointing to. So my incident angle from a measurement is uh, 45, 46. Uh, looks like it's 46 degrees. We'll say 46 degrees. It's theta 1, right? So then I use n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. And if I want theta 2, uh, I could just really make the simple theta 2 is equal to the sine inverse of um, n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. I, I just kind of shortcutted everything. So in this case, n1 was air, so we could say it's a sine inverse of 1 divided by 2.42, because that's n2, which is diamond, and it's the sine of 46 degrees, and I need someone to plug that in the calculator. It's the sine of 46 divided by 2.42 sine inverse. Someone grab a calculator. Come on, kids. By... Right, so 1 divided by, divide, take sine of 46 divided by 2.42, and then take sine inverse. Like 17. 17 degrees. Like 17. So 17 degrees, because I can't do better than that anyway. Take my protractor, change it now so it's on the other side of the um, thing like so. 90 is on the line like that. And then 17 degrees. I go down here in the corner. That's 10. That's 15. 16, 17 is like right here. Make a little mark at 17 degrees. Then I take from the point there to here, line it up with the protractor, and I just. How much is the first angle? Away I go. 46, 46 degrees. degrees. Gotcha. Yeah. Right? Then uh, I make a second normal line where it contacts the surface. I'm going to do it here because you want the 90 always to be in contact so you know you're perpendicular. Then I create a dashed line along that spot like so. Now the perfect thing is technically you don't you could do this whole thing again in reverse and get another answer, but it turns out that this angle is 46, this angle here is 17. But because they're alternate interior angles, this is also 17 degrees. So what you're doing is basically you're going from here to here, and then you're going from the same angle back out. It's like doing the same thing in reverse. So I don't even have to use Snell's law because because if I started with 46, I'm going to exit with 46. <laughs> So I take my little protractor, put it back on the line again, make a second mark at um, 45, 46 degrees like, like that. Then I make from the point of contact at the beam to there, like so. Boop. And there, I've made it around the bend. That's the, prime, that's the hardest part of this thing. Now to get it to the center of the dot, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna project where I want it to go, like, 
I'm going to say I want the beam to bounce like this. This is what I want. I want the mirror to bounce it so that it hits the center of the target, right? But I know for a mirror, the angle on this side and the angle on that side, they have to be the same. It has to be reflected. So what I could do is I could bisect this angle, right? Just divide it in half. So the first thing I do is measure what that angle would be. So the angle that's desired in this case, got to get at that point of switch. The point of switch in this case was 161 to 363, I think. Is that right? It looks like it's 164. So what's half of 164? That's going to be 82. 82, right? So we want 82 degrees to be the bisector. So I'm going to leave the marker right where it was, right? Like so. Make that there. So then 82 degrees is like right, one, two, right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this from at, and bisect that point to divide it exactly in half. And you'll see why in a second. Because I know the mirror has to be perpendicular to this bisector that bisects those two angles. If that's 82 and that's 82 degrees, then the mirror should be exactly perpendicular to that transition. And if I did it right, you should see, it should be this angle and that angle are the same, that's the mirror. And then once I've established that that actually works, I can just go from here to the center and then just make it solid. Ta-da, the end. Nice. How long did it take to do? Five minutes. Just because you had the angle, like, if you don't have this angle. I just picked a steep angle, that's all I did. I didn't, I didn't pick.